Hi there folks, welcome back to Rich Reviews. It's the third day of the Virginia Film Festival. Here's the film that I'm going to be reviewing for you guys. This film is called Hostels and this is written and directed by Scott Cooper. This is the fourth film he's done. I like Crazy Heart, Out of the Furnace not so much, Black Mass not so much, but Hostels may be his best film he's done in his young career. After seeing The Battle of Lefty Brown, in comparison to Hostiles, The Battle of Lefty Brown is a complete child's play here, folks. So this is that decade later, in 1890s. This is a pers persistently powerful western that is soaked in beauty, tears, and blood. It really deals with the real last bit of spasms of resistance by the American Indians, particularly the Kamikachi and the Apache. This film opens with a quote by D.H. Lawrence, that reads, the essential American soul, hard, isolate, stoic, and a killer. That explains the whole entire film here. And you would think to yourself with that type of quote, this film would open up with a bunch of soldiers going after Indians, considering that most cavalrymen the Civil War will eventually go out and be transferred over to. No, it begins with a, no, this is the Apache coming in and massacring nearly the entire family of white sailors, only leaving a woman named Rosalind Quay, played by Rosamund Pike, alive. Then we meet Captain Joseph Blocker, played by Christian Bale with a heavy beard. And he's been assigned to escort Chief Yellowhawk, played by the always reliable West Studi. Yes, Graham Greene takes a break, obviously, from being the only Native American that can actually do film roles. And the Chief Yellowhawk is dying. He's the Christian Bale character, has therefore has to travel from all, from all the way to Arizona to Montana so that he can die there on Indian reservation land. Chief Yellowhawk is traveling with his family including his son that is played by Adam Beach and then also including Keanu Kircher who I guess is Peruvian Indian I guess and another young Indian boy. Blocker despises Chief Yellowhawk for all the massacres but then again he's been out west in the Indian Wars and he's done stuff himself that has left him bitter and, you know, even though he knows the language, there's also a subplot here of them having to take on, eventually, a prisoner played by Ben Foster. Yes, it's a 310 to Yuma reunion here with, of course, Blocker does accept the assignment on Earth the threat of court martial, and he does go out with several soldiers, including an African-American Buffalo soldier and a recent West Point graduate, also an Arab one here played by Jesse Plemons. Also, in one scene, there's one character discussing with Plemons' character about the nature of killing someone and how, and how you can become so normal to that, which is quite interesting to see how that plays out because the Jesse Plemons' character has never really killed anyone before and the Solar Soldier has. Now, of course, along the way they do meet the, the Rosemond Pike character who's in a Canatonic state. She's not really happy about seeing any more Indians. Locker clearly is beside himself, but he has to realize, okay, it's better for her to be with us than with out in the wilderness so she can be picked off by Indians yet again. And of course, this movie sort of embraces the tropes of the Indians being the wise men or either being the savage, you know, that, that's how it is. Frankly, one of, the, one of the things that this film deals with is how do you forgive someone clearly that's been hostile to you in the past now, the certain characters, such as the Bailable character, the Rosemond Pike character for a certain extent, and some other characters do, have, do come to forgive what they've done to the Indians, and the Indians, to a certain degree, have kind of accepted this. Other characters, such as like the Ben Foster character, who had that been to have as a prisoner, quite frankly, it's like, why are you trying to for, forgive these people? They're the savages. That question is race. How do you forgive someone? How do you achieve a normal life after you've been designed to kill all these people? Some people have said that this is one of the more violent Westerns they've seen in a while. I don't disagree with that because, quite frankly, there is a lot of Indian violence, a lot of Western violence that if you're not accustomed to seeing, then you'll, you'll be in for a shock about how violent this film is. One of the more interesting things is when I was watching this film, and this is probably the only drawback of this film because, quite frankly, I really do like this film and the cinematography here is wonderful. The only drawback that I have to say about this film is that where I was sitting, I literally could not figure out, and I was sitting in the back of this theater, that I couldn't understand what Christian Bale was saying half the time, and maybe that was because of his beer. So maybe at the same time, if you're watching this in a smaller theater, you'll be able to understand Bale half the time. 
So folks, in the end, Hostiles is a really, really great bloody western that shows you how the policies of corralling the Indians, how forcing the Indians on Indian reservations, which were not great at the time, and they're still not now. And this shows you a western side that you don't really necessarily see. And so what I'm going to say here, folks, is that Hostiles, to me, I'm going to give this a leave work early, even though despite the fact that sometimes I couldn't hear what Christian Bale was saying. So folks, what do you think of Hostiles? So folks, Hostiles, what do you think? Did you have to like this film? Did you have to care for it all? What's your favorite Western? What's your favorite Christian Bale performance? What's your favorite film of this director here? As always, folks, like, comment, subscribe, enrich yourself of knowledge. I'll see you next time, folks, with another film from the Film Festival, folks. Yeah.